Good afternoon. It is the 6th of August. Again, I am double recording today. Don't ask me why. I'm fucking crazy. I'm Murph. Welcome to our early to mid game free to play explanation, extravaganza, experience, enter, E letter word here. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> with this morning's video, I covered kind of who I am, what I want to do with this series and with this channel. And the ways forward. This is not going to be typical of me recording twice in one day and posting twice in one day, but I meant to actually record that first video last night and was having a whole lot of MP4 issues with the video, losing audio and corrupting and everything else. So I said, fuck it. But in order to stay on schedule today, we're going to talk about something new. Now, at the end of the video from earlier today, I mentioned that we're going to start talking about the campaign farming priority and the store farming priority for early to mid game players as it pertains to kind of this new meta that hasn't gotten a whole lot of coverage from other content creators. And I was going to go in depth today on my farming guide that I have put together, but instead I can't tell you guys what to farm for the meta if I haven't defined what the meta is. So today we're gonna go in depth on what the current meta of Marvel Strike Force is, what it means to like the overall player base and what it means to us being those lower to mid tier players who really might not have a shot at apocalypse anytime soon, but may still want to build towards it. Essentially at the end of this video, you're going to be left with two options. Either you're going to be chasing the meta and we're going to explore how best for you to chase the meta at this level, or you can say, fuck the meta at which point, I'll make another video later on for kind of ideas of teams to build and where to put your account if you don't feel like chasing Apocalypse. But uh, if you guys are enjoying the content, please make sure that you subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment, start a conversation down below, and let's get into it. So the first thing here that we've got is a blog post from July 19th. Now this is kind of what threw all of this horseman mumbo jumbo into chaos and threw the player base into a frenzy of what the hell and 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 really caused the divide of either okay i'm building for apocalypse or i'm not so up to this point we had the first two horsemen scourges so the first one being morgan lefay in the pestilence event and the second being rogue in the scourge or the famine event uh, rogue being the unlimited x-men team and morgan lefay being the darkhold team so we're going to roll through this blog post and see what changed. So first off was Sagas and Awakened Abilities. So this came out just about at the end of the first round of the Famine Scourge, right before the second round of the Pestilent Scourge released. And they basically announced the Saga. What the Saga is, is once you have unlocked that Horseman character and that Horseman's team, i.e., Morgan Le Fay and the Darkhold team, a saga for the Pestilence unlocked. So this will happen every single time these Scourge events come around for a second time. That that Scourge's saga will unlock in this new Legendary Campaign area. So what does that mean? It, there's now an Epic Campaign area, which is where you'll also find your Dark Dimension campaigns as well. Down here, the requirements for the actual sagas. So the Pestilence Saga, you need Morgan Le Fay and Darkhold characters. Famine Saga, you need Rogue and the Unlimited X-Men characters. The War Saga, you need the War Horseman, which at this point had not been announced, but it has since been announced as Red Hulk. And four other characters, being that Gamma team of Hulk, She-Hulk, Brawn, and Abomination. Death Saga, nothing has been announced there yet. And finally, the Apocalypse Saga, where, wherein you will need all four horsemen with their respective teams and several additional characters who still have not been mentioned yet either. Now, there are multiple difficulties for these sagas. The basic level is difficulty 1. It's required gear, thir ter or gear tier 13 for each character. Now, it says gear tier 13. That is the minimum entry requirement to even attempt it. From what I've heard feedback of some of my alliance mates and buddies that play the game is that Tier 13 isn't going to cut it. At a minimum, you're going to need Tier 4 abilities on all the characters on the team. And then that still might not even be good enough. You might have to push to Gear 14, 15, which is fine. Because as you see, Difficulty 2 and 3 require Gear Tier 15 and 17 
respectively. Now, what happens with difficulty two? You unlock Apocalypse. Let's see where it says. Um, so, yeah, to unlock Apocalypse, I was trying to see if it said the actual star levels here. There it is. Okay, gear difficulty two, gear tier sixteen. ISO 8, blue level 14, you unlock Apocalypse at 5 yellow stars and 2 red stars. Difficulty 3 with gear 17, you will be able to promote Apocalypse to 7 yellow stars and 4 red stars. Kind of similar to how the Dark Dimensions work when you unlock that legendary character at the end. You have to run it a second time in order to complete that character. You have to run difficulty 2 and 3. So what that means is if you're chasing Apocalypse, you have to build the each horseman's team to gear 17 to complete him. Now, that's a long ways off. That means at a bare minimum, you have to be level 90 to even level those characters up high enough to put the gear on them. That doesn't even cover the requirements that go into leveling all of those characters up to that level, gearing them all up to gear 17, and completing the actual sagas. So that's a lot, right? If we're early to mid-game players, that is so, so far down the road that it's really not worth thinking about right now. It is in the sense that if you have these characters, you have these horsemen unlocked, you can start building them so that once you do hit level 90, hopefully you'll have them all unlocked and you'll be able to push for Apocalypse. But that's basically the meta right now, right? Is get your horsemen through the scourges, get your horsemen teams up, and then unlock Apocalypse. Well, actually scratch that. So the meta is build your scourge teams so those required teams for each of the individual scourges, nodes 5 and 10 and all the other traits that are required for other nodes. Just build your scourge teams, unlock your horsemen. Build your horsemen teams, unlock apocalypse. It's pretty simple, right? Now, I put together a graphic on my Excel here. Let me pull it up. All right, so we're going to try recording this again because I didn't realize the first time I recorded it that my resolution was messed up and you really couldn't read any of these charts. So... This is the meta. This is our pyramid of characters. The pyramid being a tribute to Apocalypse, being an Egyptian pharaoh and all that. Cool. Whatever. So, we've got five tiers total. I'm going to dumb this down keep it very, very simple. Your first tier is your horseman characters. Since these characters and teams are acquired for your sagas at gear 17, they are your number one priority if you're building for Apocalypse. Tier 2 is going to be your scourge teams. These teams are required to unlock your tier 1 teams. Tier 3 is everything that's still a decent team for war, for raids, and everything else, legendary unlocks. But with the Apocalypse meta, they kind of fall in the back burner for now. Tiers 4 and 5 are... Tiers 4 is luxury characters and teams where if you if you were here a year ago, you could have built them and they could have been great teams. Not so much anymore. Tier 5 is garbage. We're really not going to talk about them. I'm going to zoom in a little more so we can actually see this. So boom, there we go. So up here, obviously, you can see Apocalypse at the very top. That's our end goal. Your first team is Darkhold. Through the Pestilence Scourge, you will unlock Morgan Le Fay. Her supporting characters in that team are Doctor Strange, Har Do Doctor Strange Heartless, Agatha Harkness, Wong, and Scarlet Witch. So this team will round out your, your Darkhold team. Your Unlimited X-Men are your second team with Rogue from the Famine Scourge. Did I say Pestilence or Famine for Morgan? Doesn't matter. Uh, Gambit, Sunfire, Phantom X, and Dazzler. Your third team is going to be Gamma through the upcoming War Scourge, with Red Hulk being the Horseman. Hulk, She-Hulk got reworks and are part of this team. Abomination and Brawn will come in the future. Nothing is really known about the fourth Scourge, aside from the fact that Bionic Avengers are required for them. Your second tier of teams are your Scourge teams to unlock the first tier. So we've got Web Warriors for the Pestilence Scourge. They're a required team. They're also the Bile Raid team. So you can use them for Doom War or Doom Raids. They are great in Dark Dimensions for your City Nodes. They also cover City Nodes for your Famine Scourge as well. And your second team is going to be Bionic Avengers. The reason I have this above the other teams is because this is the second raid team in this tier. They're going to be your new tech raid team. They're not fully released yet, but Iron Man and Vision just got reworks for the team. You can start gearing them up now. They're great. Love the reworks. Uh, they also carry global traits for your Dark Dimension and for other nodes in your other Scourges. Young Avengers are going to be required for your Famine Scourge, for your Rogue Unlock, for nodes 5 and 10. They're also one of the top 5 war defenses if you can invest enough gear and T4 ability materials in them. They're also a strong city team, so you can use them for the city nodes of Dark Dimension. 
Heroes Guardians are going to be required for the War Scourge for your Red Hulk unlock and to round out that team. They're phenomenal and so fucking fun to use in war defense and offense. I know there's a whole lot of debate in the community right now about how good this team really is. I get it. They are very slow. You have to be able to eat that first round of attacks with whatever you attack. So you have to be careful what you're picking. But I have consistently on both my level 82 main and my level 68 alt punching up like 130 to 150k against teams like Wakanda and other defense staples that aren't necessarily meta defense teams but are very typical to see on defense. They also all carry cosmic traits so you can use them in dark dimension for your cosmic nodes and Thor and Mighty Thor also carry cosmic mystic traits so you can use them in scourges. Wave 1 Avengers, Ravagers, Inhumans, Dark Hunters, and A-Force. These are all secondary teams for various Scourge events. Wave 1 Avengers and Ravagers will be for the upcoming War Scourge event. Inhumans and A-Force were both used for the second event, Famine Scourge. And Dark Hunters were used for the original Pestilent Scourge with Web Warriors. Now, these five teams, if you have spare materials and you want to, you can invest in them. However, as a disclaimer, I will let you know now, they really are no better than throwaway teams, sacrifice teams for those first few teams to clean up for. And you can make an argument they belong down in tier three or tier four. Tier three, we're back talking about our war teams, doom raid teams and legendary unlocks that might not necessarily affect apocalypse too much, but they're still good teams to have. First off, you got Eternals. With Icarus and Cersei, they are still a very good arena team and they are great in cosmic nodes for dark dimension and you're your mystic lanes for doom raid and you can also use them in cosmic mystic for your scourge unlocks weapon x is still one of the best war offense teams omega red wolverine lady death strike saber two silver samurai they all carry global tags they all carry mutant tags and four out of the five members also carry villain tags so that means that you can use them in dark dimension and other scourges for the global mutant and villain tags new warriors are still a meta mystic raid team they're great. I'm not going to go into too much detail on them. Secret Avengers is still your meta skill raid team for Doom Raids. They also all carry global uh, traits, so you can use them in Dark Dimension and for your Scourges. Astonishing X-Men is still your meta mutant raid team. Again, global. Heroes for Hire is still one of the best war defense teams. Shang-Chi is also a great character to build, regardless if you have the rest of them built, because you can use him on the Secret Avengers team for raids for that skill node infinity watch is just a great team in general cream minions are required for your nick fury unlock who is then required for your omega red unlock and they're all farmable very early on in the game marauders they are good for war defense and emma frost and mr sinister are both great standalone characters for plug and play they all also have villain mutant and global tags so you can use them in a lot of different nodes for scourges Sinister Six, while it's a crap team, they're still required for in Invisible Woman, who's required for your Nowhere Heist. You can also use them to unlock Shuri along with your Web Warriors. And Shuri is important because she feeds into the next team, which is Wakandan, which is required for your Chaos Theory Flash event, and Killmonger is required for three separate Flash events, and they're a Cosmic Crucible team. Cosmic Crucible will pay off in the long run. Them and Unlimited X-Men, you need to build ASAP. If you can max out your Cosmic Crucible rewards, it will help you farm out those gear 16, 17, even gear 15 um, gear pieces from that store from an earlier stage. X-Factor, X-Force round out this tier. Uh, X-Factor required for your Adam Warlock unlock and X-Force for your Doc Ock unlock. Now, tier four again is Luxury Teams and Legendary Unlocks. This is gonna be everything from Black Order, which you can make an argument should belong in tier three right next to Infinity Watch. Um, but they're a little harder to farm. They're still a great team, especially in war and on villain nodes, but they really don't serve a whole lot of purpose in the entire Apocalypse meta. Uh, your hand team can be used for Relic Hunt. Aside from that, they're garbage bin characters. Hydra, they're good early villain characters. Winter Soldier's required for Omega Red. Aside from that, garbage bin characters. Pym Tech required for the Jubilee Unlock for your Astonishing X-Men for the Mutant Raid team. Aside from that, again, garbage bin characters. Shield, for the most part, garbage characters, but they're required for Iron Man unlocks and for Iron Man progression, which is required for one of the Scourge events and part of the tech raid team, so they do serve a purpose. Shadowland, War Defense, that's it. They're still not that great. 
on Kenny X-Men. I've never played the game at a point where this team was meta. If someone can please explain to me what's good about them and, and let me know if I'm wrong, just let me know in the comments. We'll have a conversation about it. I would actually love to know. Symbiotes, I call them the Web Warriors beta because like when a video game is released, you have your alpha, your beta, they're used for testing, feedback, and everything else. And you come out with the real game. Web Warriors came out and replaced Symbiotes in the meta. Now, Symbiotes are still a great team, and you could argue they're right there with Black Order, Infinity Watch, but when they all require bio gear, which your Web Warriors need and your Gamma Horseman team needs, they fall they fall low. They really do. If you played at a point where they were meta, you have them already built up, great. You can use them for City Nodes. You can use them for Villain Nodes. You can use them in Dark Dimension. But aside from that, not a whole lot of use. Your garbage tier is going to be your AIM, Brotherhood, Defender, Fantastic Four, Power Armor, and Supernatural. I'm really not going to go into detail on those teams because they don't even really bear worth mentioning. Now, this is the meta for Apocalypse in its entirety. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense for newer players because it's going to be very difficult for character or for players under level 75 to unlock these horsemen. Typically, you need gear 14 to unlock them the first time around. Gear 13 is the minimum requirement for characters, or the, the minimum recommendation rather for characters for completing difficulty five in the Scourge events. But I would recommend at least having the key characters in those teams gear 14, if not the entire team at gear 14. So that means at level 75, you can start putting characters in gear 14. It's going to take time to get them from that point on. So what do we do in the meantime? Well, this, as you can see, this is the meta. This is our meta. The only difference here is we flipped tier two and tier one on like on top of each other. So logically, you need your scourge teams to unlock your horseman teams. Even though the horseman teams are the end all be all for unlocking apocalypse, you still need to build your scourge teams first. And most of the scourge teams you can farm and build prior to getting that gear 15, that level 80 requirement for apocalypse. So we've got Web Warriors, Bionic Avengers, Young Avengers, Heroes Guardians, Wave 1 Avengers, Ravagers, Inhumans, Dark Hunters, and A-Force, all right here. Build them if you can, specifically Web Warriors, Bionic Avengers, Young Avengers, and Heroes Guardians. The rest of them, if you have time and spare materials to invest, I cannot fault you for it. Just know that the, the last five teams on that Tier 1 are more or less sacrifice teams for the first four teams. If you unlock Darkhold, Unlimited X-Men, Gamma, you can invest in them at any time. It doesn't matter. You still need them at gear 17 with tier fours to complete Apocalypse. So anything you invest in them is not wasted. This pretty much covers it for now. If if this seems like too much for you and you don't think that Apocalypse is really your goal right now, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to make another video in the near future that's going to cover kind of if this isn't the meta you have in mind, but you still want to play the game, have fun, build your account and grow. There's directions where you can do that and still be a quality commander in the game, have a quality roster, and contribute to your alliance without having to push for Apocalypse. Because you might not hit level 90 until Apocalypse is done and over, and the next Saga event comes around, right? And then it's the new meta. So we'll cover that in a later video. Tomorrow's video I'm going to make is going to cover the actual specific campaign farm and the store farm priority for this tier list here. So if you guys have enjoyed this content, please make sure you're subscribed. Come tune in for the next one. If you stayed this long, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I've been wanting to make content on this game for a long time now. And uh, drop a comment. Do you agree, disagree with this, this ranking order? Give me some feedback. Am I wrong? Am I off base? Or yeah, let's have a conversation. I'm replying to everybody in the comments right now because obviously it's not a whole lot. And the majority of you, I know because you're in my alliance. So thank you guys for sticking around. Have a good night, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.